It was little as if they put the Ferrari on their photocopier and then set it on grayscale. But a few years later, they ever so subtly tweaked it. Engine, steering, transmission, gear ratio, suspension, tires, leather, and my god is it on target. Where Ferrari uses a nerdy five-way stability race mode control switcheroo, Lambo simply installs an avalanche of heroic lariness. The controls don't communicate with you. They electrocute you. The SC really stands for suicide edition. This must exactly be what 72 virgins feel like. It has faults, um, well it is quite a beast of the three-point, I could more easily dock the space shuttle. And at 10,000 miles, the suede steering wheel turns into an Oreo cookie. And there is something to be said about the something it says about you. Hey, look at me, people! This is my penis! Look how small it is! All supercars enunciate that, but with its lack of scissor doors and huge wings and scoops and slits and gills, the Gardo says it the least. But hold on, Scott. What about the Carrera GT, the McLaren Mercedes, the Audi R8? They're faster, cheaper, more practical. Yeah, I get it. The Porsche Carrera GT has a ceramic composite clutch that's 10 times lighter than any other, which means you stall constantly. The SLR is so easy to drive, Paris Hilton bought one. That should be a sign. The R8 is Audi's first ever sports car and has therefore no bloodlines, no reverence, no pedigree. Supercars should spoil your ego, not mock it. Look, a $40,000 Audi. A hundred and ten thousand dollar one, a sixty thousand dollar Porsche, and a four hundred and sixty thousand dollar one. Their inferiority lies within their subtlety. Speaking of subtle, I present to you the best car, period. The Bugatti Veyron. 0 to 60 is 2.4 seconds. Top speed, 253 miles an hour. 16 cylinders, 4 turbo superchargers, and 10 radiators spawn 1,001 horsepower. It's the most powerful, expensive, luxurious, fascinating, and fastest car ever made by man. This man the grandson of Dr. Portia and one of my heroes, Ferdinand Piaf. He had the artists pen the car first and then demanded the mechanics engineer the horsepower and the top speed goal around the styling. It was lunacy and it was beyond all human technical ability. At those limits, tires melt, engines seize, transmissions explode, brake pads liquefy, and a bird strike through the grill could shatter your legs. The Bugatti scientists cracked the two holy grails by stacking two V8 engines on top of one another. They gave the radiator grill six titanium meshes to deflect birds. They used the oil pump from an F1 car. They fitted an air brake that alone provides more stopping power than the brakes of a Prius. Heat-resistant tires had to be invented, and the fuel pumps were scavenged from a Soyuz rocket. I assume, and all ensconced in an aesthetically uncompromised, spared no expense decor. This isn't the redneck making it bigger as luxury. This is proper luxury, stuff that would make Naomi Campbell weep. And you won't find an 8-inch high-def touchscreen or joysticks or other children's toys in here, because the gentleman knows the best part of valor is discretion. But it's not the best supercar because it's too expensive. The down payment costs more than your house. A millionaire couldn't afford this car. Look at who you have to be. Tom Cruise, Simon Cowell, Ralph Lauren, or Sheik. At 1.7 mil each, it's not the best value supercar. This is... And hero to all nine-year-old boys and single models. But for men, it's a hard car to appreciate. Even car and driver stumbled when they vomited 
The Gyarado lacks subtle sensations and tactile reassurance. But that's not criticism, that's praise. It would be rude for a supercar not to overwhelm your soul with trepidation and humble you into submission. You should wet yourself every time you drive one. The Ferrari is technically superior, but for those with the means, it's just